Hello. Today I'd like to show you how to use the skill of factoring that we've been practicing lately to solve certain types of equations. So we've solved equations before, and uh, in the past uh, it's been we, we do steps on it, we add stuff to both sides, we divide, and, and our goal is to try to get x alone. Uh, in this chapter, uh, we have more complicated equations that have x and x squared terms in them. And uh, the process of trying to, you know, move the 20 over and, and maybe divide by 11 to get this x alone, uh, it's, you're still going to have these terms here, uh, this x squared term. And so that process is kind of, well, it doesn't work. You can't ever get x alone um, when you've got multiple terms like this. So we need a totally new and different approach. So before we dive into that, let me do a quick review of uh, some vocabulary, and uh, then we'll uh, see how this new approach looks. Uh, just as a recall, uh, polynomials can be written in two different forms. Uh, one is called standard form, and that's uh, like you just saw that one. Um, that was when you could see all three different terms. and uh, then there's what's called factored form. And factored form is when you've got uh, two different factors, and these things are multiplied together to give you this. So they're both equal forms, uh, but they serve different purposes. And uh, one of the reasons that factored form is kind of nice is because it makes equations much easier to solve. So um, let's look at uh, some specific examples. Suppose we didn't know anything about solving equations. Um, one thing that uh, you could do is just pick some numbers, try some numbers, plug them in, and test and see if it makes a true statement. That's what a solution is, after all, a number that a variable can hold that makes a statement true. So if I look at this equation, uh, guessing some numbers uh, that the x can be that will make it true. It's not an easy uh, task. Uh, I've, we tried it in class. We tried about four or five different numbers before somebody was able to suggest that we try the number three. And uh, when we plugged in a three, then we got, uh, well, two times three times three is uh, 18 minus three is 15, and 15 minus 15 is zero. And so that works. But three is not the only solution which is kind of different. Most equations we've solved so far have had just one answer. Um, now we're going to have more than one answer. There is another answer, and unfortunately it's not a nice number. It's a, a decimal, um, and we could maybe stumble across it by guessing, but it's kind of tough. I'll spare you the details, and maybe we'll come back and look at it later. But um, let's look at this equation. This equation is written in factored form, and uh, I notice, first of all, that it's something times something equals zero. And uh, I know something about uh, zero and multiplication, kind of interesting. Um, anytime you multiply by zero, um, so anything times zero is zero. Uh, that's kind of a fun fact, and it kind of works in reverse. If two things multiplied together equal zero, the only way that can happen is if one of those is zero. In fact, that's a theorem. Uh, I sometimes call it the zero product theorem. And it, it means if two different factors, and really it could be expandable, maybe there's three factors or four factors or 100 factors all multiplied together equals zero. The only way that can happen is if at least one of those factors is zero. And so armed with that knowledge, the only way that this could be true that x plus 5 times 2x minus 6 equals 0 is if one of these factors is 0. And so what might it take to make this factor 0? Well, if this factor, if I put in maybe a negative 5, would that work? Negative 5 plus 5 gives me 0. Over here, if I plug in negative 5, I get, uh, I think this works out to be negative 16. But uh, the important part is, 0 over here times negative 16 is 0. In practice, I really don't even look at this part. I don't care what this part is. I first look at this and see what do I need to make it 0. If I can make this 0, it doesn't matter what happens over here because I'll have a true statement. And so that's how we get one of our answers, looking at this factor. We get that x could equal negative 5. And if we want to find our other answer, then we can do 
Another trick, we can look at what does it take to make this factor zero? Because maybe this is something times zero equals zero. And a uh, couple of good guesses, you can stumble across three again. Two times three is six, and six minus six is zero. And it happened to be eight over here, but really, in practice, I don't care. Anything times zero is zero. So um, if x is a three, or if x is a negative five, this particular equation is true. So we say these are the answers. Now, I want you to remember that shape. Something equals zero in factored form. If we can see an equation that looks like that, it's a very easy one to solve. In fact, here's a handful of them that are pretty easy to solve. What does it take to make this factor zero? Uh, well, eight. Eight minus eight is equal to zero. So one of our answers is eight. The other answer is, what does it take to make this factor zero? That one might be a little harder, negative two, but if you can't see that, you could always write it out x plus 2, let's say that has to equal 0, so we'll subtract 2 from both sides. So here's our two answers. I keep saying here's our two answers. Most of these problems will have two answers, but uh, this one, for instance, actually has three different answers. Um, so here I've got something times something times something times something equals 0. The only way that uh, that can be as if one of these four things is zero. Five can't be a zero, so we kind of just ignore that. There's no variable there. I can't make it a zero. It's a five. So, but uh, there's a variable in this expression. I might be able to make this zero if I choose the right variable number. Um, this is a little trickier, so I probably will write it out. Two x plus one equals zero. Subtracting one and two x equals negative 1. If I divide by 2, then uh, I get x equals negative 1 half. So that's one of our possible answers. I will tell you that I normally think this through. I don't usually write all this stuff out. And uh, I encourage you to do that too. Uh, kind of a trick. The sign of your answer is always going to be the opposite of this sign. That's why we came up with a negative. And then uh, if there's a number in front of the x, we'll have to divide by that. Um, so negative 1 and then divide by 2. That's how we get this. Practicing that here, the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. And then we have to divide by this. So I'm guessing it's going to be x equals 2 thirds. Just to convince you, I'll write that one out again too. But that's probably the last time I'll write it out. Adding 2 to both sides, that's why we had the opposite sign, because we had to switch it to the opposite side, and then divide by 3. So we do indeed get x equals 2 thirds. And then here, it's just the opposite sign. It's just 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So there's three answers for that equation. And I throw this in here just to, uh, because it comes up in our book a couple times. Um, something squared, remember that that is just x plus 5 times x plus 5. I would not multiply that out. It's much easier when it's written in this factored form. What does it take to make this factor 0? x has to be negative 5. What does it have to take to make this factor 0? Also negative 5. This one's kind of a unique one that actually only has one answer, negative 5. Now, if all of our problems were written in factored form, that would be very easy. Unfortunately, they're not always written in a factored form, but that pretty much is the direction we're going to go. That's the new strategy. When we're solving polynomial equations, um, here are some steps. Take an equation. Uh, so a lot of times they'll come with like stuff equals stuff. One of the first things you want to do is to get one side equal to zero. So do moves, add stuff, usually or subtract stuff to get rid of everything on one side so that you've got stuff equals zero. And then make this factored form. That's what we've been practicing. Factor equals zero. Because now it's in the nice form. I can just read off an answer here and read off an answer here. So I've got a couple examples queued up here. I think I've got uh, three. Um, the first one is 
uh, kind of a mild problem. The second one's medium, and we've been calling the third problem uh, spicy or hot or blazing. So um, just slightly different difficulties. So here's one, uh, m squared plus 5m minus 14 equals 0. So first step is get something equal to 0, and uh, this one, that's already happened. So I don't need to do that. Second step is to factor this. And uh, that factorization is not too difficult. So um, I've been teaching it with a table lately. So I'll do an example with a table. You put your m squareds here and negative 14 there. And then I've got to find two things that multiply up to the same thing this diagonal multiplies to. So it's either negative, or 1 and negative 14, 2 and negative 7, 7 and negative 2 or 14 and negative 1. And I need to write the pair that adds up to 5. So that's this pair. So I'll write 7 m's and uh, negative 2 m's. And then pull out a common factor and see what uh, do these things have to be to make everything work. And the outsides are what go in the parentheses. Now, admittedly, um, some teachers do not teach with this table, and uh, they can just, uh, their students just go straight to this. Uh, I encourage you to do that same thing. If you can think this in your head and just go straight to uh, the factored form, go right ahead. I highly encourage it to you to do it any time there's not a number in front of m squared. When there is a number in front of m squared, it becomes a lot harder job to try to think through it like that. Now and pull a table out then. But anyway, that's the factoring step. That's usually the hardest step in this process. And uh, finally, setting each factor equal to 0 is what does it take to make this 0? m could be a 2. And what does it take to make this 0? m could be a negative 7. I won't take the time to do it here, but you may check if these are really answers by plugging them in. Plug a 2 in here and a 2 in here, and it needs to make a true statement. Or plug a negative 7 in here and a negative 7 in here, and it makes a true statement. So that's how there's solutions. Let's try a uh, medium level problem. And uh, I say that just because it involves all three steps now. First thing I need to do is get one side equal to 0. So there's only three things over here, and there's only two over here. So it'll be easier, I think, to move these. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. And uh, I'm actually going to think ahead and also add 4 h's to both sides and kind of accomplish both of those in one step. So this becomes h squared. Uh, that's 13 h's. 52 and minus 12 is 40 equals 0. So step one's done. Now I need to factor this. I'll do this one without a table. These always are your h's, uh, or your variables. And then in these blanks will be the numbers that multiply up to 40 and add up to 13. Um, that pair of numbers is uh, 5 and 8. 5 times 8 is 40, and 5 plus 8 is 13. So there's step two. And then step three is looking at this factor and this factor and making them zero. So this has to be negative five. And here, h has to be negative eight. Now, the spicy one. So it's not really that much more difficult, except the factoring step is a little harder. So um, still get one side equal to zero. So these things got to go. I'll probably subtract x squared from both sides and also subtract 10 from both sides. That gives me 3x squared and 10x and 7. And that all equals 0. And uh, now to factor this, because there is a multiplier in front of the x squared, this problem is a little bit more difficult. It's not just two numbers that multiply up to 7 and add up to 10 that go here and here. Uh, and so I'm going to uh, use a table on this one. I'll write uh, 3x squared in one corner and 
7 in the other corner, and I need to find two numbers here that multiply up to 21 and add up to 10. So 1 and 21, 3 and 7, that's really all the combinations, unless you include negative numbers. And so the only pair of these four that add up to 10 is this pair. Those go here. They don't go in your parentheses. That's why I say you really ought to use a table for these if you uh, learned it that way. And uh, we pull out a common factor. The uh, top row only has an x in common. And uh, if this is x, this has to be 3x. If this is 3x, this has to be a 1. 3x times 1 is 3x. And this has to be a 7. 7 times 1 is 7. So the parentheses become 3x plus 7 and x plus 1. And so this divides to uh, the opposite of 7 over 3. So negative 7 thirds is one answer. And here just the opposite of 1. So negative 1. So they're solving equations, uh, polynomial equations, by factoring. And that's why we've spent uh, the last couple days really practicing factoring and working with a skill. This is probably the biggest application of um, rewriting it in factored form. So thanks for watching. Tune back in again uh, next time to learn how to solve equations by using the square root.